Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial on Vector in Motion. Today I am going to show you how to draw shear force and bending moment diagrams for a cantilever beam acted upon by UVL and a couple. So in the first problem we have this cantilever beam which is subjected to a couple of moment 100 Newton meter at the free end and a point load of 40 Newtons at the center point of the beam. So the first step is to determine the reaction forces at the fixed end. We have reaction force Vy and a moment Mb. We're going to consider first the equilibrium equation sigma Fy equal to zero and that will give us minus 40 plus By equal to zero and that will mean By is equal to 40 Newtons acting in positive Y direction. Next we consider moment at point B and the equation is sigma mb equal to zero. We consider all clockwise moments as positive. So we shall have 100 Newton meter, 40 Newton force will produce anti-clockwise moment and the moment arm would be 10 meters. So minus 40 times 10 plus mb equal to zero and therefore mb will work out to 400 minus 100 that is 300 newton meter and this is positive so it will be in clockwise direction so the direction of the moment that we have shown here in the diagram is correct now we proceed to drawing the shear force diagram The left of A, the shear force curve will be zero and we move to the right and we find a couple of moment 100 Newton meter, but the couple, the moment has no impact on the shear force curve. So our shear force curve will continue to be at zero level up to point C. So we draw a horizontal line up to point C. This is A and this is C. At C we find a 40 Newton force acting downwards so the shear force curve will have a negative jump up to minus 40. Let's say this is this point is minus 40. So we make a jump like this and we find no force between points C and B so the shear force curve will stay at minus 40 between points C and B. We draw a horizontal line here this point 2 is minus 40 and at B we have a force By acting in positive Y direction of magnitude 40 Newtons so we'll have a positive jump of 40 so we hit the zero level again at point B so we started at A at zero level and we end up at point B at the zero level that means our shear force curve is, is correct. So that's how the shear force curve is going to look like and let's compute the area under the shear force curve between A and C the area is zero and here it is forty times 10 meters that is 400. We will need this information when we draw the bending moment diagram. So here this is point A and to the left of point A the bending moment is 0 and we move to the right and come to point A and we find a 100 Newton meter moment and that is in clockwise direction. So 
we're going to have a jump in our bending moment curve. But is it going to be positive or negative? That will depend on the, the sign convention. Here we find that clockwise moment is considered positive because that creates sagging in the beam. So all clockwise moments would be regarded as positive, right? So here the 100 Newton meter moment would be considered positive because it is in clockwise direction. So we're going to have a positive jump. Let's say this point is 100. So we make a jump from 0 to 100 Newton meter. Between A and C, the shear force curve is 0. So we draw a horizontal line between point A and C. This is C. So now we work out the value of MB, MB minus MC is equal to the area under the shear curve and that is going to be 400 and 400 is in negative side. So that will be minus 400. So that means MB is going to be MC minus 400, that is MC is 100 minus 400 that is minus 300 newton meter so let's say this is minus 300 here so we join these two points with a straight line notice that in the shear force curve this is a horizontal line between the points c and b therefore we are going to have a ramp an inclined line between points C and B. At B, we find that there is a clockwise moment MB of 300 Newton meter. So we're going to have a positive jump because MB is in positive direction. So we make a positive jump and we reach a value of zero. So we started at A with zero value and we end up at B with zero value. That indicates that our winning moment diagram is correct. Note that up to this point, the winning moment is positive and between this point and the fixed end, it is negative. And this is positive. So let us find out what is this point. Let's say this point is X from point C. So from similar triangles, it is this triangle and this triangle. We can say X upon 100, X upon 100 is equal to this distance is 10 meters, so 10 upon this length, which is 300 plus 100, that is 400. So X will turn out to be 10 upon 4, that is 2.5 meters. So X is 2.5 meters. That is from A to this point, which is 12.5 meters, we have positive bending moment and beyond this point, we have negative bending moment. So that concludes solution to this problem. Now we move on to drawing shear force and bending moment curves for cantilever beam acted upon by UVL. So here we have this cantilever beam with UVL acting between points C and the fixed end and the load intensity is 5 kN per meter at the highest point. There is a point load of 10 kN at the free end. 
So let's first determine the reaction forces and the reaction moments. There will be a reaction force Vy and a moment Mb because we have a fixed support here. Considering force balance equation in y direction, we have minus 10. Let's convert this UVL into a resultant load that will be acting like this and its value would be the area which is 5 times 6 that is 30 divided by 2 that is 15 kilonewtons. And this distance would be one third of this length that is one third of 6 meters that is 2 meters. So this UVL is equivalent to a 15 kilonewton force acting at a distance of 2 meters from the end B. So let's get back to our force balance equation. We have minus 10 here, minus 15 plus dy equal to 0 and that will give us dy equal to 25 kilonewtons acting in positive y direction. Next, we consider moment of forces at point B. We have the equation sigma mb equal to 0. We will consider all clockwise moments as positive. So that will give us this force will have an anti clockwise moment about point B. So that will have minus 10 times 12 meters, which is the moment arm for the 10 kilonewton force. This too would produce an anti-clockwise moment. So minus 15 times 2 plus mb is equal to 0. And that will give us mb equal to 120 plus 30. And that is 150 kilonewton meter and that's going to be in clockwise direction because our result turns out to be positive. So the direction that we have shown here is correct. So this is 150 kilonewton meter and this is 25 kilonewtons. Right now we can proceed to drawing the shear force curve. To the left of A we have shear force equal to zero and we move to the right and we find a force 10 kilonewtons pointing in minus y direction. So we're going to have a negative jump of minus 10. Let's say this point is 10. So our shear curve will look like this. And there is no force acting between points A and C. So the shear force would continue to be minus 10 between these two points. So we draw a horizontal line like this. So at point C, this is minus 10. And now let's compute the shear force value at point B. So Vb minus Vc is going to be the area under the load curve and that's going to be 15 kilonewtons and since it's pointing downwards we'll have minus 15. So that means Vb is going to be Vc that is minus 10 minus 15 equal to minus 25 kilonewton so let's say minus 25 is here. So we have to join these two points. We have a ramp here. 
So in the shear force curve, you're going to have a parabola. Take a look at this table. When Q is linear, that is of the type some constant K times X, the shear force curve is a parabola because when we integrate Kx, we get Kx square by 2. And because of X square term, we have a parabola. And for the bending moment diagram, we further integrate Kx square by 2 and we get Kx cube upon 6. And therefore, we have a cubic curve. So when we have UVL, the shear force curve will show a parabola and a cubic curve in the bending moment diagram, right? So we are going to join these two points with a parabola like this. Why like this? Because the slope of this curve, shear curves, is equal to the value of Q here. It is zero here, so it will be horizontal and it's high at five kilometers per meter. So the slope of this curve will be higher, higher than what it is here. So that's how the shape of the parabola would look like. At point B, we notice there is a force of 25 kilonewtons in positive y direction. Therefore, we're going to have a jump of 25 in our shear force curve. So we make a jump of 25 and we hit the zero level. So we started at zero and we end up at zero. That means our shear force curve is correct. I can put a label of P here to indicate that this curve is a parabola and that this is a straight line, S for straight line. So you notice that the shear force curve shows a negative shear throughout the length of the, the beam. Now let us compute the areas under the shear force curve. So this area between points, this is A, between points A and C is 10 times 6, that is 60. Let us split the area between C and B into two parts, rectangular part and this part, this is parabolic. So this part would be 10 times 6, that is area of this part is 60. And this part, the area would be one third of this length times this length. This formula you can check in your textbook under the chapter of centroids where areas of common shapes is given. So this will be equal to one third of this length is 15. 15 and this length is 6. So this will work out to 30. Newton meter. That means the total area is 60 plus 30, that is 90. So having computed the areas between different points, we now turn to drawing the bending moment diagram. So here again we start with 0 at point A. We have a horizontal line here in the shear force curve, so we're going to have a ramp and the value of mc minus ma is equal to the area under the shear force curve between points A and C, that is 60. And this 60 area is below the zero level, therefore it is negative. So mc is equal to plus MA 
that is 0 minus 60 that is equal to minus 60. So let's say this point is 60 minus 60 and we're going to have a straight line between A and this point. So we draw a straight line between A and this point. And let's see, this is, let's label it as S. Between C and B, here in the shear force curve, we have a parabola. So in the bending moment diagram, it will be a cubic curve. And what will be the value of MB? MB is going to be MB minus MC is equal to the area under the shear force curve between points C and B. And that is minus 90. Therefore, MB is going to be minus 60 minus 90. That is minus 150. So let's say this point is minus 150 and we draw a cubic curve like this this point is minus 150 i can write give a label of c to indicate that this is a cubic curve it has a sharper fall than the parabolic curve. And at point B, we find there is a moment MB of 150 kilonewton meter. And this is in clockwise direction, that is, it is positive. So we make a positive jump. So we make a positive jump of 150 and we reach the zero value. So this is how the bending moment curve will look like. This is negative. Even in this region, it is negative. And the maximum bending moment occurs at point B and it is minus 150 kilonewton meter. And the maximum shear force is minus 25 kilonewtons at point B. So that concludes solution to both the problems and I hope you found it useful. Should you have any question, please leave them in the comment section below and I will respond to them as early as possible. Thanks for watching. In case you liked it, please give your thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel in case you haven't done so as yet. Thanks again.